This week, it's lights out in Chicago, and if these Converse are as comfortable as they say they are, this new buck shouldn't be a problem at all. I am your host, Jacques Slade, and this is the Weekly Review. Starting things off this week is the Air Jordan 3 Retro New Buck. Now, the shoe has caused a bit of an uproar in the sneaker community because the Jordan purists are upset that they've switched out the traditional leather on the upper and started using New Buck. Now, this shoe has no release date and we don't know if it will ever see the light of day. As of right now, all we know is that it's a sample. But we do get some really detailed looks thanks to the good folks over at Modern Notoriety and Sticky213. So you're left to form your own opinions and actually, that's gonna be the question of the day and I'll talk about that a little later. So right now, no release date and uh, we don't know anything other than what's in these pictures. Let's move on to number four. I must admit, I was a little skeptical when it came to the Jordan Comfort series. However, the new Jordan Comfort Air Max 10 in cool gray just might change my mind. As you can see, the hybrid sneaker mixes mesh and nubuck on the cool gray upper, leaving the sole in white and a wrap around the air unit. Now, these are priced at $135, which is a little steep. However, these are definitely a pair of neck breakers. For those interested in grabbing the Comfort 10 Air Max, head over to Premier or other fine Jordan retailers. Last week, the highly anticipated debut album from Royce the 5'9 and Eminem graced the shelves of your favorite retailers. Now, to help promote the album, Eminem and Royce hooked up with Converse on a special edition Chuck Taylor. Nothing too crazy, they just added the Bad vs. Evil logo on the lateral ankle, as well as the Shady Records logo on the tongue. The bad part? Only 100 pairs of the shoes were made available. The evil part? They were only made available in New York and Boston. No West Coast love. That really sucks. Because I am a Chuck Taylor fan. Oh well. Go pick up the album Bad vs. Evil by Eminem and Royce the 5'9". It is a bit of a sad moment in sneaker history as the show that brought us Turtle the Sneakerhead is in the process of filming their very last season. However, this last season may have a silver lining if the Nike SB Dunk we see here actually makes it into a retail space. Brought to you first by KicksOnFire.com, the official Nike SB Dunk for Entourage will be called Lights Out, a metaphor for the show's last season. Now, as of right now, we're told that the, sh the shoe is only going to be a friends and family release, which means I need to make some friends or some family over at the Entourage set. Let's move on to number one. 2012 was already shaping up to be a great year for Jordan brand and things just got a little better. Seen here is the Air Jordan 10 Chicago, which will be joining the ranks of the retros next year. Now this is just a sample and things could possibly change, but as of right now, Jordan fans are excited about the potential of the Air Jordan 10 Chicago. White leather, red and black accents. Yeah, I think this one's gonna be a big deal. For my honorable mentions this week, I went with three shoes that I thought were off the beaten path. One is a custom, one's a runner, and one is a classic. Let's start with the custom, and it's by Diversital, and it is the Nike Dunk High Num Num Num. As you can see, these shoes literally look like they are good enough to eat. Uh, the cookies, it looks so real. Anyway, let's move on to the second one. And the second sneaker is the Super Mario times the Converse Chuck Taylor All-Star. They come in an all-over print and a level one and last level print. The all-over print will be dropping in July and the last level and first level will be dropping later in August. And finally, for my final honorable mention, it is the June Watanabe times the A6 Gel Light 3. As you can see, these shoes look absolutely spectacular. The colors are crazy, the design is crazy. Unfortunately, I think they are only available in Japan. However, that does not stop us from liking them. With that said, let's move on to the personal pick. For my personal pick for this week, I'm going with something that's pretty simple. I've adopted a, a very simple style for the uh, for the summertime just because it's so hot here in Cali and I'm going to go with the Adidas Original ZX500. They're seen here in gray and lime. I'm a big fan of runners and simple runners. You can dress them up, you can dress them down, you can pretty much wear them with whatever you want. And so I've been really looking at a lot of the simple silhouettes for the summertime and this one with a gray, with the mostly gray upper and the lime accents really appealed to me. So that's the Adidas Original ZX500 runner 
definitely a real simple, you know, definitely you can adopt it for the street. You can, you know, maybe run in it if you're a runner. I'm not, I play basketball, but you get the idea. So that's the Adidas Original ZX500. Let's move on to the question of the day, of the video, actually. Question of the video, I am messing up today, goodness. <laughs> So last week's question of the video, I think I confused some people. I wasn't uh, exactly clear what I wanted everyone to do. What I wanted everyone to do was to take each shoe and rate each individual shoe on a scale of one to five. But it looks like some people actually took shoes, all of the shoes and rated them how they thought they would go in a one to five order based on those shoes, which kind of made it difficult to put the numbers together to see which shoes you guys like the most and which ones you didn't. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and just scrap all that. And I'm gonna go with what I talked about earlier today, which is the Jordan 3 Nubuck. A lot of Jordan purists have been in a bit of an uproar over the Nubuck upper instead of the leather upper. I haven't decided yet how I feel about it, which is kind of what I said earlier, but I didn't know this was such a hot button issue. So I wanted to talk to you guys and have you guys let me know what you feel about the Jordan 3 with a new buck upper as opposed to the leather. Is it is it blasphemy or is it just, you know, something new? Uh, I personally feel it's something new. It looks like something new. I mean, I can't say whether I like it. Just because it's new doesn't mean I like it, but it's something new, but that I don't think, you know, is too bad. So you guys let me know what you feel in the comments. Leave a comment letting me know what you think about the new buck. And then, you know, what do you think about other colors? I mean, other materials. Maybe they do one with some fly wire, Jordan with fly wire. Who knows? I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there. You guys let me know in the comments. Well, that is the end of the weekly review. I am your host, Jacques Slate. As always, we appreciate you guys. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe. This will let you know every time a new video is posted. If you haven't watched last week's video, it is boom right there, as well as there's some links at the top, but that looks a little better. So you click right there. You should probably click right there. If Twitter and Facebook is your thing, that information is down in the description. You can follow me, you can follow Kicks on Fire, and you can also follow Kicks on Fire on Facebook. As always, I appreciate you guys. We wouldn't be doing the show if it wasn't for you. So you guys are what make this happen from the comments and clicking the like button and subscribing and all that stuff like that. So thank you, thank you, thank you. This is the weekly review, and I will see you next week. Peace. <laughs>